Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video we are doing a really really tough past exam question on the endocrine system. I chose this question because it's not just about the endocrine system but also we need to practice our skills on investigation questions. So we need to know our scientific method you know like aim, hypothesis, reliability, validity. We always forget that one of these questions is always going to show up in a June exam, a mock exam, Exam or even at the end of the year. So I think it's really important that we practice both the content and also applying it to one of these kinds of questions. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on. I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you are in grade 12 and you're looking for that extra edge, don't forget that you can also get a copy of my cheat sheet, which is a study guide with all my tips, tricks, and easy how-tos into navigating these really difficult topics. Now, it's at this point, if you want to pause the video, attempt the question, then please do so. Otherwise, I'm going to start breaking down the question and how to answer these questions for full marks. So we've got a lot of reading that we need to do in this particular question. We've got actually two parts to it, starting off with the writing in our text box. At the top, it says uh, people with type 1 diabetes mellitus are usually insulin resistant. So we're just going to highlight that in case we need it later. Uh, they must inject themselves with insulin to control their blood glucose levels. It has been determined that these people also lose their ability to secrete glucagon within five years of being diagnosed, and they become glucagon deficient, okay? During a stressful situation, adrenaline is secreted, which has the same effect as glucagon on the blood glucose levels. Now, before we go any further, let's just make a little note to ourselves, what does actually glucagon do versus insulin? Um, we're just going to make a little note up here, and it'll come in handy later, but insulin remember, lowers your blood sugar levels because we store it away versus glucagon is going to increase your blood sugar levels, okay? So now keep that in the back of your head because we are going to need to do some work on that and you should be doing the same things in your exams, you know, making these little notes. So let's continue on to the rest of the question. Now, the next statement is really important to us because it is the aim of the experiment. It says an investigation was conducted to determine the influence of adrenaline on the blood glucose levels of type 1 diabetics who were also um, glucagon uh, deficient. Now it gives us the breakdown of the rest of the investigative question, and it says the following. We had 100 male uh, patients with type 1 diabetes. They were also glucagon deficient, and they participated in this investigation. They were given the same amount of food and water at the same time for a period of three days. Their blood glucose levels were measured on the morning of the third day. A solution with a low concentration of adrenaline was then administered intravenously, which means injected. After 20 minutes, the blood glucose concentration in each person was measured again, and the blood glucose levels before and after administrating adrenaline were also compared. So they did a lot here. Now, I just want you to know that sometimes when they give you this misinformation, what they're trying to do is overload you with information to see if you can filter out what is and is not important. Um, and so sometimes they give you a lot of things that you don't actually need to use. Now, this is a harder question. Right? This is a more advanced question, so there's more filtering on your part and selecting the most correct answer. So let's go over to our questions and have a look what we need to give. First of all, number one, name the gland that secretes glucagon. Now, um, glucagon, um, remember, comes from the pancreas. So that's going to be our first answer. Now, the next question says, identify the independent variable in this investigation. So we're, what, we, what we need to do is go back to our green highlight over here, and we need to select the independent and the dependent variables. So it says to determine the influence of adrenaline on blood glucose levels. Now, the thing that we're going to measure, right, is the dependent variables. So that's going to be our blood glucose levels. But in terms of what is affecting it, what is the thing we are testing, it is definitely going to be the influence of adrenaline, influence of adrenaline. And so that's going to be our independent variable, and it's going to be uh, adrenaline, right? So far, so good. Pretty easy peasy, right? Moving on to our next question. State three other factors that should 
have been kept constant during this investigation. Now, that means these are all the variables that need to remain fixed and that are there to maintain validity. Now, that means you cannot use ones from the passage. You have to come up with your own. So you can't mention that there were 100 males or that you gave them the same amount of food and water on the same time for three days. You can't say those things because they're in the paragraph. You have to come up with your own three. Now, some easy ones that we can always come up with are linked to the actual substances we're using. Now, nowhere in the paragraph does it say how much adrenaline. So we could say something like amount of adrenaline. Another one linked to the adrenaline is the concentration of adrenaline. Nowhere does it say how concentrated it is. Another thing here we also don't mention is anything else about the patients. Yes, they are, are all male, but what about their age? What about their overall health? Okay, and these are all things that can ultimately affect the outcome of this experiment. So we could just have any three of these, and the list is actually quite extensive. So you could even have others that I haven't even mentioned here, but I'll show you all the answers that you could have given in the memo, in the memo right at the end of this uh, video. The next question says to explain why blood glucose levels were measured before injecting adrenaline on the third day. Now, remember, when we do an explain question, and I always say this, we've got to provide a statement with a reason. And so our statement in this instance over here needs to be linked to why were we measuring it before and then giving our reason. So statement, we want to measure before because... We need a baseline or an initial amount, right? We need something that's originally there before we start. Why do we need a baseline? Because we need something to compare it to, right? We need something to look at the before and the after. And so whenever we see and explain, don't forget to give a statement and then a reason. Now, this next question is where we might see some cracks in our flow and understanding, and we might not be sure what to say. But don't worry, you've learned everything that you need to know in order to answer this question. The next question says, explain why adrenaline was injected instead of given orally. Now, there is more than one answer that is correct. And so I'm going to start off with the most obvious one and then maybe go to the more abstract one. The most obvious one has to do with the fact of getting the adrenaline straight to the organ. So remember, it's an explain question for two marks. So we need a statement and we need a reason, right? So our statement is going to be that adrenaline is given orally so that it can be direct to the organ reason so that it can act faster or sooner. Now, there is another answer to this, which does actually make it quite unusual. And I wouldn't expect everyone to know this offhand. Um, and this one is the fact that adrenaline is a protein and that proteins can become denatured. So the statement would be something along the lines of the fact that adrenaline is a protein. And because adrenaline is a protein, if you are to eat it, it would become denatured and it would be useless. And so that's why very often when we have injections of things, there must be injections because if we were to ingest them orally, our digestive system would break them down into something else and it would be useless to us. This is a more unusual answer to give, but it is an acceptable answer because as a biology student, we need to know how substances are affected by our digestive systems. Now, moving on to the next question, it says, again, another explain question. What would be the expected results after adrenaline was injected into the patients? Now, we're going to have to go back to our main um paragraph because it's going to help us answer this. Remember it said earlier on, if we have a look here, that during a stressful, a stressful situation, adrenaline is secreted and it has the same effect as glucagon does on the body level, uh, glucose body levels. And we also made a little note earlier up here saying that gluco uh, glucagon uh, raises your glucose blood levels. So 
what we need to say here is what would be the expected results. So, statement. Blood glucose levels are going to increase. Why? Because, reason, adrenaline acts like glucagon. Now, our last but not least question, it says, give a reason for why we used 100 patients in this investigation instead of 10. Now, this requires you to know your reliability and your validity reasons. Now, I always get matrix who are confused, and even every grade actually gets confused on these. Um, now, why do we use such a large number? Well, remember, in reliability, we've got three things. We either have a large sample size, which is our reasoning for this answer. That is our reason. But there are, are other reasons if they were, for example, if they'd calculated an average, that would be so that they can maintain reliability. Or the fact that they had... Um, repeated their experiment. These are all reliability answers, but specifically for this one, why did they use 100 patients? They used 100 patients because it's a large sample size for reliability. In other words, the results are reliable. It's really important to also know all of your validity reasons. Now, our validity reasons are all about the variables being the same. And we had a few of them in this um, question here, like same amount of food, same amount of water. But they actually asked a validity question up here in three to three, which we've already answered. But please, please, please go into exams. Know the difference between reliability and validity and how we either create an experiment that is valid or it is reliable. And how do we do that? In this example, we did that by using a large sample because we used 100 patients instead of 10. Now, here is the memo for you to have a look over and just compare our answers to the ones that you've done maybe on your own and just go through it, see how they've allocated marks and some alternate answers that we haven't necessarily done together now that would also have been accepted. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed because I will see you all again soon. Bye.